Welcome, dear friends, to Cardiac Radio at 11 p.m., nourishing our souls with the Spirit of Truth, a book that Valdo Vieira and Chico Xavier, two Brazilian mediums, psychographed in 1960, published in 1961, and finally, 60 years later, today, we bring to you the contents of this book in English. It took 60 years, but we're here. It's all about the truth. It's immortal, everlasting. What you and I are studying today is something that will bring to immortality. This is a time in which we're investing in us. We're investing in our very immortality. Today, Emilio, the coordinator of the project, writes a message titled Renunciation. And it's not about renouncing chocolate. It's deeper than that. It's very brief. The message contains three, six, seven paragraphs, but it's deep. And you and I may be asking, why is Emilio in need of showing to us more about renunciation. Some people ask, isn't it enough what Jesus said? What he did? We need more than that? Friends, let's talk. The truth comes in increments. We can't handle the truth yet. It's too much. It's like light. Little by little, we're absorbing it. As any good educational system, the more we're exposed to it repetitively, we absorb it. So today, it's not the first time that you have heard about the recommendation on renunciation. But it will be a new day for us because we'll be asking ourselves, what do I need to renounce? Emmanuel, inspired, he was inspired by item five of chapter 23 of the gospel according to Spiritism, in which Kardec quotes Luke chapter 18, verses 28 to 30. Then Peter said to him, as for us, you can see that we have left everything and followed you. Jesus said to them, Verily I say to you that no one will leave his home, his father, his mother, his brothers, his wife, or his children for the kingdom of God, who will not receive much more in this world and in the time to come eternal life. This chapter is called Strange Morals because, as Kardec explains later, he says, is this contradictory? Jesus saying that, you know, we need to honor mother and father since Moses' time. He didn't come to destroy the law. He came to fulfill it. So how come he says people need to leave their family to follow him? Kardec explains, and Emmanuel through Chico Xavier expands to another level. Are you ready? Are we ready together to verify where we need to trim our lives in renunciation to make our lives more fulfilling? Ready? During this pandemic, the truth is essential. Either we restore the course of events or we won't heal as a society. And that's why the mentors at Cardiac Radio have programmed the very study of the book, The Spirit of Truth, because we are at a critical time when the truth needs to be cherished, needs to be appreciated. We need to boost each other's discernment to make wiser choices. So here we come. Let us listen to Emmanuel 
as he comes through the benevolent, generous, renouncing hands of Chico Xavier. Let us feel it. He begins, renunciation. If your parents do not seek the intimacy of the Christ, renounce the happiness of seeing your parents sharing the divine feast of the good news and help your parents. If your children remain distant from the gospel, renounce the contentment of filling their hearts with your heart in the redemptive path and help your children. If your friends are still unable to perceive the love of Jesus, renounce the bliss of keeping them in the warmth of your soul before the Son of Truth and help your friends. Renunciation with Jesus does not mean desertion. It expresses greater devotion. In him, the Lord, we will find the sublime example. Forgotten by many and by many relegated to the agonies of denial, even then he did not depart from the companions who gave him the anguishes of the unloved love. Rising from the cross, Jesus Christ, who had gone through the nightmares of ingratitude alone and the death tortures, he returns to the coexistence of the very ones and say confidently, Behold, I'll be with you until the end of times. Breathe. Let us breathe together. We need to breathe to feel the very presence of the Christ. God is so good. God is so loving that he never forsaken us. He gave us and he gives us much. We need to practice gratitude and look around and see how many wonderful friends, how many family members that are really supportive, how many, how many advancements in our science nowadays are giving us more relief in spite of the pandemic with the many billions of people that we have on earth. It could have been worse but science is catching up. Thanks to the renunciation of scientists, whom we know of some of them, who are working day and night, night and day, to make possible the healing of each one of us. Emmanuel, in the book Harvest of Light, he says to us, that scientists can be ministers of God and laboratories to true temples of God when they are serious, committed, and honest. So today, you and I are being asked to revisit how we can renounce our ego. You and I love the Christ. We are here. Some people don't know him yet. And we are anguished. We look at our parents and we want them to join in. They don't. But Emilio is saying, help your parents. What does he mean, help your parents? Do not push it on them. But help them. Sometimes help is just to listen to them. Or give them a hand so their lives are easier. And if we really love the Christ, we'll follow through the example of Jesus. As Emmanuel says, he was forgotten by many. But he, in spite of it all, he came back. 
and still repeats every day to you, to me, to everyone. Behold, I am with you till the end of times. He never regretted being with us on earth. He never said, oh, it's a waste. Some parents or some children, when they look at their parents who are messed up, right? Unbalanced or the children. They say, ah, oh, you know, I'm giving up on my family because it's fruitless. This is our human part, but we are asked to raise above it and like Jesus, express greater devotion. Emmanuel is asking us if we have children who are not feeling like uniting themselves to the Christ. Let us help them. Support their self-esteem and say, I love you anyways. I am here for you. And you're a child of God. Whether you cherish God or not, it's probably my fault. And this is a parenthesis that Mentor Joseph is making. Since he really cares about parenting, he thinks it's the mission of the mission, according to Spiritism. For all of us, right here and now, when a child is not very acclimated to God, it's because we haven't acclimated the child to God. We haven't breached it up. Why? Because we were distracted when we were younger. And it begins at the beginning. When they are teenagers, it's much harder. If they see us loving God, loving the Christ, and putting God first always, sooner or later they will. Because in our loving relationship, they come along. But let us open a parenthesis here and talk about cases that are real. Of estrangement between parents and children, children and parents. When it's quite clear that they are enemies from previous lives. It's a tough situation. Item 9 of chapter 14 of the Gospel According to Spiritism. In there we'll find St. Augustine's thesis to explain to us that that ingratitude, that difficulty comes from previous lives, but blessed will be the one who steps forward to pacify. And some people ask, who should be doing this? Some people say, I think it's the children. They need to honor parents. I think it's the parents because they came first. Both? But of course, parents need to step up first. They need to forgive their children. They need to practice to love their children unconditionally. It's easy to love an angel. But we're talking about true love, unconditional love. And that's what we're talking about. So Emmanuel today extends even to friends. When we have friends that don't perceive the love of Jesus. So he says, renounce the bliss of keeping them in the warmth of your soul. Before the son of the truth. Because Jesus is the son of the truth. Every time we look at the son, it's Jesus for us. Because Kardec explains in the Spirit's book, in a footnote, that the rays of light that come from the sun are a byproduct of the loving thoughts and loving feelings that come from pure spirits that are meeting at the sun. We don't know further than that, but that we know. So next time we feel the warmth of the sun, the light of the sun, let us raise ourselves, our minds, our open our hearts and feel the sun of the truth that are working with Master Jesus to keep us here growing, progressing, elevating ourselves, edifying a new earth. Renunciation is greater devotion. And we will find always in the Lord Jesus Christ, our very reference. As a neuroscientist, I finally understand why 
the wisdom of spiritism is so deep because it was so recent when science discovered that we have an inbuilt system in our nervous system to imitate. We see people and we feel driven to imitate. It's the mirror neurons. So by seeing Jesus, the more we know of Jesus, the more we look at Jesus, the, the more we are going to understand what he did and follow through. He said he will be with us till the end of times. What does he mean? He means until we align with God. What is the exercise? What is the exercise for the next 24 hours? Because you and I, when we are doing this workout of the soul, it's the 11 p.m. gym of the soul. Yes, it is. When we are here together at 11 p.m., nourishing our souls, working our muscles, the muscles of our thinking, our reasoning, opening our feelings to feel the scripture. Today, it's all about greater devotion, renouncing our ego, thinking about the long run of life. You and I are being signals of that transformation to other people. This is a terminology that was given by Professor Euripides Barsanufo in his methodology, saying that those that already understand the truth, the Christ, the Christ consciousness, and understand and feel it, they become a, a signal for those who are around. So it's important that you and I practice renunciation in the next 24 hours. Sometimes it's renouncing the plans for a so-called vacation. So we can help someone else. Sometimes it's the renounce, the renunciation that comes from expecting that people are going to be on the same page with us. Not now, because in 7 billion people, Millions have become acquainted with spiritism. And yet, even amongst those millions, very few are still the ones who really walk the talk. And of those thousands, much less speak English. So you and I have a mission, and I say this quote unquote, of course, of expanding our vibrational capacity in the next 24 hours by lifting a new weight. Let us devote ourselves to others in thoughts, feelings, words, and actions. Let us feel ourselves more understanding, expecting less and giving more. That's what renunciation is all about. Think of Mother Mary. She renounced her ego because when she saw the criminal action towards the perfect son that none of us will ever have, none of us will ever have, only she did. She never thought of herself thinking, oh my gosh, what am I going to do? What's going to happen to me? When we go to chapter 30, of the book Good News by Umberto de Campos through Chico Xavier, we understand once and for all that Mother Mary was humble enough to not allow her ego to take place. She vanished her ego with God. She put God center stage. When the angels came to her by the cross and said, may you be the slave of God, meaning fulfill God's will, trust God's will. And we visualize one day all of us on earth, on the same page, following the shepherd, or now, you and I need to help being the sheepdogs 
not being the astray ships, the ships, right? The sheep, not the astray sheep, but the ones that help gather them together for the Lord and focus on greater devotion. What is another name for greater devotion? Love. And today, John the Rose sent me a message with a new verse that he came, he brought together, which I'll read to you because it's fascinating. He says, not only love is in the air because God is everywhere, but he brought a new one and I'm opening it to you in a minute. He says here, <clears throat> watch and pray because love is the only way. So here we go. Love is the only way. So let us watch and pray and watch and pray by devoting ourselves more fully to those who are in our lives. Family members, friends, colleagues at work, neighbors. Thank you, friends, for being with us. And see you next time, tomorrow at 11 p.m. God willing. Thank you, Emmanuel. Thank you, friend.